This video is to demonstrate the installation of a typical IWTM protector. We have used a live site as an example. If you have a new installation, the connections for the protector will be planned as part of the design. On a retrofit installation, you need to find a connection point either side of a circulating pump. In this case, the redundant dosing pot connections are ideally located. There is one connection on the inlet of the pump which will connect to the outlet of the protector and a second connection on the outlet of the pump that will go to the inlet of the protector. You can check the direction of most pumps with the indicator arrow on the pump body. Marking the pipes with simple arrows will guide you as you make your connections. It is worthwhile checking and tracing one final time before starting work on the installation. With the inlet and outlet pipes clearly identified, the removal works can commence. Start by isolating the service valves that feed the dosing pot. Now the old dosing pot and pipe work are ready to drain down. Drain down the water for safe disposal. Now the redundant pots and pipe work can be stripped out and removed back to a convenient connection point for the protector installation. You can then move the protector close to the installation point, ready to unpack. Note the arrows to indicate which way up the box goes. At the base of the box, you will find all the installation accessories which you need to remove first. The protector can now be walked out. Keep the plastic protective cover on during the installation to protect the protector from any damage during the installation process. In the base, there is the drain connection pipe, drain valve and air vent. Lift off the lid and set safely aside. Move the protector into position. This is the water meter, unions, washers and pulse output connector. Assemble the unions and washers. The pulsed output connector is fitted if you want to connect the meter to the building management system to record the volume passed. There are location logs and a retaining screw to secure it in place. This box has the isolation valves, plugs, test point and four port rinsing valve. The clear bag has the drain pipe and valve and the air vent and nipple. This box is the flow regulating valve. Start by fitting the drain valve to the protector using best practice industry recognized jointing methods. Then the automatic air vent. Mark out your position for your pipes and the protector.
Then mark out the base fixing holes. Drill the floor for anchor bolts. The protector should not be fixed down with screws and raw plugs due to the weight of the unit when full. Now the isolation valves can be assembled. The unions are installed to the protector using a ratchet radiator valve spanner. Install the outlet valve assembly. Assemble the test points to the inlet valve. The test point goes on the inlet, so we test incoming system water and not engineered water leaving the protector. The protector has two top inlet connections either side and two lower outlet connections. You can use any inlet connection and any outlet connection to suit site conditions. Now the outlet connections can be assembled. All these components go on the outlet, so they are protected by the protector filter. Note the direction on the water meter and the regulating valve pointing away from the protector. Water meter, regulation valve and then the four port valve is the correct sequence of installation. The water meter records the volume passed. The regulation valve sets the required flow rate. The four port valve provides connection points for resin rinsing of the system. When the levers are in line with the pipe, water passes straight through. When the levers are turned 90 degrees, water is diverted to the flushing ports, where hoses will connect to a resin device. The pipework connections from the protector valves to the system pipework can now be completed. Plug off the spare connections with the plugs provided. Once the pipework is complete, the system connection isolation valves can be turned on to fill and vent the protector. Open the regulation valve and then the isolation valves. Open the auto air vent and let the air out until the protector is full. Now open the upper connection isolation valve. As the protector is now full of water, air will not enter the system. The swing meter is now activated as the anodes are now working. Remove the plastic cover. The protector is now ready for final commissioning. Fit the insulation jacket to the regulation valve. Note the arrow for the flow direction. Secure the jacket with the supplied zipper ties. The pressure indicator is showing us the system pressure. The regulation valve is set to the required flow rate for each model protector by pulling the ring out to see where the ball bearing settles. You then adjust the valve until the ball bearing is at the flow rate you need.
For the P25 model, the flow rate is 25 litres per minute. Set the indicator at 25. Please refer to the installation manual for the correct flow rates, as each size protector has a different setting. Now the protector and the installation pipe work is ready for final pressure testing. The pressure test should be 1.5 times the system pressure shown on the protector gauge. Prepare the protector for testing by fitting your test equipment to the drain connection. Shut off the system isolation valves and pressure test the installation. Once the satisfactory test is completed, remove the test equipment and fit the drain hose adapter to the drain. Open the system isolation valves. Replace the lid. The chemical inhibitors can now be safely removed from site as these will no longer be needed. The old dose in pot signage and chemical notices can be removed and replaced with our document holder and manual. Another system is now chemical free and helping towards the environment.